something I've always wanted Ed and John Ficara and maybe John Tamarian to do because they always, always say, well, we're going to sit here and we're going to estimate the value of the king of sedans cars. And I'm like going, how about estimate the value of Travis Bell's cars? So one day I'm going to sucker these guys into doing some sort of what the value of my worthless mess is over in Indianapolis. If you'd watched the story, earlier this year, I acquired the Ferrari pickup truck, and I had gone down a path of where I thought that the car was built and purchased and done anything, but when my story came out here on VinWiki, they were like, no, you are completely wrong, Travis. There was not a guy who had a stroke in his dojo or nothing. All of that was fiction. And these are the things that you find on VinWiki, not only on the app, but sitting here in the chair. The Ferrari pickup truck is going through a restoration process. That is this year's project. And it was all hand-built and custom-built, and it was built, like we said, with real Ferrari parts. And to find a set, thank you, Sam Hard, of Ferrari turn signals and the lower fog light signals have been probably one of the worst jobs I've had this year. But we have secured them. And with the world of 3D printing, now we are 3D printing the buckets in which they fit in. And so they will fit substantially better. The bumpers off of it, it is going to go through this complete restoration process. But what happened when it was built? Shaquille O'Neal used to play for the Orlando Magic, and he was very flashy and had expeditions with like gold wing doors and spinners and all that stuff back there. Those were all made by a company called Toy Makers, and it's not the Toy Makers company that's been on like the Discovery Channel or whatever they were here within the last 10 years. This was another Toy Makers company based out of Orlando area, and they were the ones that had originally built the Ferrari Toyota. The gentleman who originally owned it has since, he did pass away, but his nephew reached out to me with some amazing pictures of it while it was being built, and that was his personal car. So the update on the Toyota is it is in process on the restoration. It does have still have the 22RE Toyota motor in it, but there is a Lexus swap now where you can put the 1UZ or whatever Toyota V8 in it. So it will have the power to match. I did have to put a set of Pirellis on it. When you buy Pirellis for this Toyota, they will ask you what you're buying them for, and you have to tell them that you are buying Pirellis for a Lamborghini Countach. So I reached out to John Tamarian because they're not made very often, but I have a set of Pirellis, a brand new set of Pirellis on the Toyota truck. So it will be back on the road, and it's probably going to be a finished in the winter project, but so there's that. Brock Yates' truck that we had acquired is in line. The Toyota kind of jumped it, and the parts are available for Brock's truck, and it is, of course, an OBS Chevy truck. The still in body kit I had bought and fixed the front end. So it was missing the front pieces and this, that, and other. I bought a whole nother truck for that. So we have everything we need to do. It just has to get in line. So that is still in process. Going through the garage now, we told a story on the GXP that was hit, written off. And the write-off is still in my driveway, running and driving every day. That's one of my favorite cars that we have. And we still drive it on a daily basis. It's now have 25,000 miles, where it had 22,000 miles and just an amazing car. My wife's orange car that got hit, still sitting there with an amazing 7,000 miles, hasn't left my property in three years. I have no idea why we still own it, but it's her baby, so she'll probably get mad at me for saying that regardless. Danny Sullivan's number 99 corporate car of Indianapolis, the Winston Cup car, for some reason that means the world to me, that I just need to kind of just get over it. I have tried to drive the thing around Indy two times, and this latest time I drug Ed and all of our other YouTube friends up to Indianapolis for a lap, and it was a beautiful morning, only to get blown away by the jet dryers that morning because it had rained all night and they wouldn't let civilian cars on the track. Ed came up in a beautiful Ferrari, Alex Palmari came down in a wagon, and all we got to do was eat breakfast in the brickyard uh, that day. So the brickyard car has still not made a lap since 1994. I don't know when it'll happen again, but fingers crossed we're going back to the Oval next year at, at Indy. So hopefully they will let me just drive in front of the race or something, and I will be a crying disaster mess driving this thing. But we did get Danny Sullivan to autograph it since the last time it's been on VinWiki. And now I don't know, really know what we're going to do with it. It's just kind of hang on to it till they do have a piece with it at the museum. All of the go-karts still live in the backyard, and the track is still there slash walking path. 
We had the story earlier this year about the tracker, and still to this day, I have fifty, sixty thousand dollars cars and just beautiful things. And you will find me at a stoplight on any given day in Indianapolis with a 1993 Geo Tracker, and everybody loves the thing. I still drive it religiously. It has about eighty-two thousand miles on it now, but gosh, I love the thing. The uh, Holden Ute that we told a story on how to register a left-hand drive Ute in the United States, up to 179,000 miles on it now. Still drive it pretty religiously. Had a pretty massive oil leak, but it was an LS problem this year. Fixed that, and I haven't driven it really anywhere lately other than my backyard to hang out with a whole bunch of other Holden Utes. One of the first times that I came down here to Vinwicky, I drove my 2016 Chevy SS, which is a Holden Commodore, and we tell the story on how to import the right badges and everything for that. The last time I drove it down here was probably the last time I really drove it anywhere. Been sitting in the shop for about three years. Tires are getting a little old, so it's probably time to put a set of tires on it. Still probably one of the most comfortable, nicest cars that I have in the whole fleet. We still have the one of about eight Stealth Blue Pontiac G8s. It doesn't really go very far. We restored it, and it's still just a gorgeous car. I don't know what the future holds for that one. I don't think we'll ever let that one go. The ambulance. This year was a big year for the ambulance. Uh, what do you do when you've done it all? They say you cannonball. Ed, myself, and Matt Begley drove it in the Southern Classic, which was a competitive cannonball event. And the good folks from Holly came on board and Jared Pink. And lo and behold, it went the 1,476 miles that it had to go. It didn't have 1,478 left in it, but that's all it needed to do. We had an incredible time for the years and years and years of me telling Ed, hey, let's do this, hey, let's do this. I've left him without a ride about three times in multiple cities, and this time it finally made it. It made it back up to Indianapolis uh, with a little bit of a misfire, fixed it, put the oil in the right spot this time, and it ran and drove this weekend, so it, it's good to go. It may end up at Mo Party again this year with Holly. I'm not real sure what the plans are, but of course that is a forever car unless there's someone out there who has deep, deep pockets and, and would love to have an ambulance in their life. Super truck still runs, snowplow truck still runs. So owning all these cars, I decided to build myself a four car garage that turned into an eight car garage. And you get people like looking in our backyard all the time, have no idea what we do back there, but we're just gearheads and we have a good time. So. Hopefully, if I'm lucky enough, after telling this story, that Ed will call me and say, Travis, it's now time to give an estimated value of your fleet. Between cannonballs and rallies and car treks, I've been on well over 100 road trips, but one of the things that I always see is that nobody else is terribly prepared. And this is not just a jab at Freddy, but generally people don't bring the tools, the supplies, and the things they need to make it all the way to the destination of their road trip. And so I decided after building kind of the kit that I take between cars for the long drives I go in unreliable vehicles as the ultimate road trip survival kit. And you'll find a link in the description below to an Amazon shopping cart of the things that I think you need in order to get there and get there without a tow bill attached to it. So check it out now. Buy what you think you want. Let me know in the comments what I left out and we'll try to keep refining it so we can build the ultimate road trip survival box.